Amen, amen. We want to say good evening to each and every one that's listening on the Timmy Radio broadcast. God bless you tonight. We're so excited tonight to be back here once again on Third Sunday Hour Power with the Word. And we're getting ready to hear a word from the Lord. And we just greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we welcome all of those that are on the prayer line as well that have joined in on this Sunday evening. What, what a wonderful evening we've had. And we give God glory and give him thanks and give him honor. Again, you're welcome. We welcome you on behalf of the Timmy Radio Broadcast and the Circle of Love Prayer Partners Prayer Line. Amen. God bless you. Now we just welcome uh, the radio host, Evangelist Linda Ellis. Greetings in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is my privilege an uh, honor to uh, to introduce our preacher for tonight, Apostle Dr. Miriam Hunt, Word of Truth Ministries. Amen. Apostle Hunt is a devoted mother, grandmother, amen, a good friend. She has established churches and ministries throughout the United States. She mentors pastors. She is an author. She has been on the Word Net Network. At one time, she was daily on the AM radio, uh, preaching the gospel for years. She founded and oversees the Word of Truth Noonday uh, Ministries International Conference Line. Amen. And that was established 13 years ago. And I have to say that she was instrumental in establishing the conference call line that we are on now. Amen. She is mentor that, uh, help me to get set up in that area, and anything I need with the Circle Blood Prayer Partners, she mentors me in it. She has supported this ministry for the last nine years, and we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for her for that. And if you need a midday charge, a spiritual boost during the day, I exhort you to call the Noonday Prayer Line, Amen, Word of Truth, because on that prayer line, you will find dedicated prayer warriors, amen. She has so many accomplishments, but those are only a few. This is my mentor, my sister, and my friend, Apostle Dr. Miriam. At this time, I'm going to ask you to stop six your phone and mute it, amen, so we don't get any interferences. And I'm um, also going to... um. Praise God. Just ask you to put your listening ears on and see what the Lord has to say to you individually and to the Circle Love Prayer Partners and anyone that listens to the recording later. God bless you. I present his song and introduce the others, Apostle Dr. Miriam Hunt. Amen. God bless you, Evangelist Ellis. My sister, my friend, God bless every listening ear that has called in on this hour to hear what the Lord has to say. We do honor the Lord, and we do tell him thank you for who he is and for what he's doing in the lives of his people. I do have a word. Amen, Lord. Praise God. And I just want to encourage some, remind some, and to push some. <laughs> on tonight in this word because there is much work to be done for the kingdom of god and so i'm going to open up with a prayer and then we're going to go into the word amen kind father we tell you thank you for this day we bless and we glorify you for who you are in the power of your might we thank you for these your people that have gathered on this phone line we dare not count it robbery god is just an honor and it is a privilege to come boldly to the throne of grace and to speak to you and to let our petitions known and to be able to be used by you. And so I tell you, thank you. And I bless and I glorify your holy and righteous name. Now bless every listening ear that they will hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say, that Miriam will decrease and you will increase even the more, that you will get the glory out of this service that's on this phone line and that will be going throughout the earways. And it is in Jesus' name that I pray and I tell God, thank you. I want to say to the people of God, every listening ear, we're in a time, and you may have heard it before, 
But uh, God has a way of always repeating himself when he wants you to really get his message. He will say it again and again and again. I want to remind us that are here on this line and those that are on the airways that Jesus is soon to come, whether you believe it or not. And we have got to be ready. And in the meantime of us getting ready, the process of what we have to go through, because we all go through many things in our lives. Many are facing obstacles and hindrances. Uh, some are up and some are down. Some have been attacked in their body. Whatever the case may be, we have to always remember that God is in control and he hasn't lost his power. And he has commissioned us every one of us that are proclaiming to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to tell a dying world that Jesus saves to the utmost. We have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. And so when I was seeking the Lord as to what he would have me to say, and then on this broadcast, and I do thank God for every opportunity that I am allotted to come on the airways. He reminded me of his word where he had commissioned the disciples in that 28th chapter of the book of St. Matthew, the sixth, beginning at the 16th verse. And it reads as thus, then the, disciples, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And we bless God for the reading of his word, St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 16th to the end. The word of God is already blessed. We, in this word that I have just read in your hearing, the commissioning of the disciples, we still take this word, this word for us today. If we are going to study this word and we say we are followers of Jesus Christ and we profess this, we stand up boldly before people and we profess this out of our mouths, then we've got to take this word and apply it for ourselves as if he's still talking to us right now, and he is. We've got to be mindful of what he has called each and every one of us to do. Exclude your title for, t for the moment, whoever has a title on this line. Just take it off of your name and recognize, amen, praise God, that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, and there is a work to do. There is so much to be done. We've lo we are lost, not losing. We have lost sight of the commission that Jesus has given to the people of God, that he let us know that all authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth. So therefore, we don't have to be concerned about the authority of men, but the authority that Jesus Christ holds, and we that are followers of him have got to recognize and respect the authority that he has over our lives. What are you talking about, Apostle Hunt? In other words, as my friend and my brother, Apostle Paul, says, that it is no longer I, but it's Christ. So therefore, we got to remember now, it's no longer Miriam. It's no longer Linda and no longer Veronica, but it is Jesus Christ, and it's whatever he wants, and it is whatever he says. We've got to be obedient to the word of God. That's our number one lesson, amen, in the gospel of Jesus Christ is to obey him and do what he tells us to do. But unfortunately, praise God, we've lost focus on who we are obeying. We seem to be people pleasers, then God pleases. Uh, we seem to do everything 
that everybody else wants us to do, but not doing what God has called us to do. And so I ask the Lord, what is it, amen, that the people need to hear tonight? What do we need to be reminded of? And he says, I need for the people, amen, to go and make disciples of all nations. I want them to understand, praise God, as to who I am. I need them to understand that the preaching of the gospel is centered on repentance and remission, our forgiveness of sins. We're not touching on that anymore. We're touching on now being a part of the kingdom, but we're doing programs where we're living in hype and exaltation of one another. All the glitz and the glamours and the praise and the worship is not unto God, but it's unto man. And so he wants us to get back, amen, to his word and understanding that the preaching of the gospel uh, and what it is centered on is repentance uh, and remission of sins, uh, forgiveness of sins. Uh, we've got to tell the people, praise God, uh, of the promises of God. Uh, we've got to understand, praise God, uh, what it is that's receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've gotten away from these teachings, uh, this foundation that has already been laid uh, when Jesus came on the scene. Uh, we're doing too much talking of other things, uh, and it's drawing souls away from God. <laughs> It's causing people, amen, to really wonder uh, if there really is a God. Uh, why do you say that, Apostle? Because uh, many are going through, many are suffering. Uh, many today in the body of Christ, not just out uh, in the world, but in the body of Christ, uh, are facing challenges uh, and situations, uh, circumstances, uh, and they're about to give up and throw in the towel uh, because the foundation that was built on was based on uh, God's going to give you this and God's going to give you that and God's going to give you this and you're going to be blessed with that. Uh, but the principle and the foundation should have been uh, repentance and remission. Uh, and you're going to go through trials and tribulations. Uh, but know that God is for you and he's with you. Uh, and he's much more than the world against you. Uh, know that because you've made a decision uh, to come on the Lord's side, uh, that the enemy he is going to t attack you. He's going to buffet you on every end. But if you just hold on to God's unchanging hand, if you remember the word, if you take the teachings, the beginning, what you had, and realize that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, I can do all things. And then just don't stay there in the baby stage, but learn even the more. My God, learn even the more about this Savior, about this Jesus. We've got to understand that we got to preach with expectancy of Jesus' return for his church because of what we go through. Many are not expecting his return. They're thinking, praise God, that everything ought to go well. Everything ought to be all right right now. But they don't understand the process. They don't understand the trials and the tests. They don't come to kill you. They come to make you strong. They come to let you see who your Redeemer really is. They come to see if you're really going to trust Him when you can't trace Him. They come to see if your profession is going to change. But you, or are you going to still stand on the Word? Are you going to be as Job? Are you going to still stand strong in the midst of diversity, in the midst of people turning their back on you, family, friends, enemies, will you continue to stand? Tonight I'm encouraging some, and I'm reminding some, and I'm bringing some back, glory be to God, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and take his word and obey. You can't tell somebody else what to do if you're not doing it yourself. And so we understand the primary purpose of this commission that Jesus Christ gave to the disciples. And it was to make disciples. I think we've lost what the interpretation of a disciple is. It is a disciplined one. It is a disciplined learner and a follower of Jesus who live by his commission.
a man's and it doesn't stop there and are continually growing in their relationship with him. We've lost that concept. We lost truth somewhere along the line when we got caught up in the cares and the things of the world. When we got caught up in the hype and the glitz and the glamour. When we want people to recognize us and not Jesus. And so tonight, my brethren, I commission you. I challenge you. I charge you in Jesus' name that you get back on track with the Lord. That you realize that your relationship with the Lord is not based on how much he can give you or how much you can give him, but it's based on a soul, my God. It's based on you being completely delivered and being effective witness to somebody else without looking for the materialistic things because you were already blessed when he woke you up this morning, called in your right mind, activities of your limbs, having a mind to want to serve him. Do you not understand? Do you not know that there are many sitting right in the congregation, in the local assembly, that really have not made up their mind that they're going to serve the Lord? Do you not know? Have you not recognized? Do you not see? Many are falling by the wayside because, my God, they have taken for Jesus and the gospel, the gospel has not become a part of their lives. And so I ask him, Daddy, what would you have me to say? He wants us to be effective men and women in the body of Christ. Evangelism does not separate you from being a disciple, a preacher, a pastor, a God, a apostle, oh my God, a teacher, all oh, does not exclude you from being a disciple. I said it earlier, drop your title and come clean and come as you are and recognize I've been slothful, I've been slackness when it comes to the things of God. I haven't told of his goodness. I didn't reach out to a lost soul and let them know that God loves them. As a matter of fact, I sit right next to ones in congregation and I didn't even tell them that I love them. Help us today, Lord. Help your people today. So we got to get back. We have to get back. We got to do it the way God has called us to do it. We have clear and precise instructions in the word of God. And yes, I'm an office, and many are office, and there may be more on the line. But listen, your book hey, is not value like this Bible. My God, help us today. We're getting too caught up in people and personalities and what they can do for us. You better get caught up in Jesus Christ. You better make a conscious decision and come out of yourself. Let that old flesh die and humble yourself before the hands of the Almighty God. That's another lesson in itself. Humility. We're afraid to become humble and submissive because we don't want people to think we're weak or we're not all of this and all of that. I got news for you today, baby. You hate all this and all that. My God, help me today. You are nothing but a filthy rag in the eyes of God. If it wasn't for the blood that was covering us, we wouldn't be able to stand in his presence. So many people have set goals, but they do not set goals following through with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Their goals are not godly based. They're not eternal standards. What are you talking about, Apostle? We got so many now. You hear it, everyone on the line. You're a part of Facebook and whatever other social media, Instagram or whatever, Facebook Live, you see it. The goals are not eternal standards. They will hoop and holler and prophesy for a few minutes. It's, uh, but if you have the gift of discernment, uh, if you have a prayer for life, uh, you will recognize what's real and not real. Uh, their uh, goals uh, are not based on eternal life. Uh, they didn't make up their mind that they're going to serve their Lord. Uh, their mind is set on how many come on in the live uh, and how many give them hearts uh, and how many give them money in their cash app uh, and how many call on their name uh, and how many invitations. 
They've got to be coming from the inside out, huh? not the outside in, huh? not showboating. Huh? My God, but mean what you say huh? and say what you mean. Huh? Your goal will be a godly goal. Huh? It will be based on huh? eternal life, huh? the eternal standards. Huh? Many reject the Bible's challenge huh? to set their affection on things above huh? and not things on the earth. Huh? Many, many, many huh? reject that challenge. Huh? They don't want to stand on the things of God. Huh? Why? Because it separates them huh? from their friends, from their foes, huh? from material things, huh? from money, huh? from the crowd. Huh? You find many that stand for truth. Huh? There's not too big a crowd following. Huh? There's not too many amens. Huh? Just the ones that have made up their mind huh? that they're going to serve the Lord. Huh? And when you find that, huh? be prepared huh? to be misjudged, huh? misunderstood, huh? ridiculed, huh? talked about, huh? looked down upon, huh? like you don't have nothing, huh? like you're not going anywhere, huh? like God ain't using you. Huh? Be prepared huh? for all of those things that I outlined tonight. Huh? Because it, when you're charged up in God, huh? not many will be charged up with you. He wants you, and he wants I, and he wants every listening ear, amen, to count up the cost of discipleship, huh? to really understand, praise God, huh? that we cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ huh? if we don't bear our cross. Huh? If you're going to get weak and heavy laden because somebody talked about you, huh? you might as well get out the race, baby. You're not fit for it. Huh? you got to go back, huh? God, huh? And, and, and do your works over. Huh? you got to repent huh? and really tell God I'm sorry huh? and try me over. Huh? Restore me. Recharge me. Renew me. Huh? Let your word abide on the inside. Huh? you got to get built back up again because huh? you can't be a coward soldier huh? in this army. Huh? And all those, amen, praise God, huh? that's always talking about spiritual warfare. Huh? you got your own warfare. It's you uh, coming up against your own self. Uh, it's the spirit of God uh, fighting against your flesh. Put it under subjection. Uh, kill it. Let it die. Uh, and you don't make up your mind uh, that you're going to serve the Lord. Uh, because when it comes to spiritual warfare, uh, the Holy Ghost uh, uh, God got him his power. Uh, he got your back. Uh, and the devil can't do nothing, my God, uh, to cause you to fall. I bless God for his word because his word is truth. I'm telling you today, this is what he wants us to do. We got to get back to setting our affections on things above and not things on the earth. We got to get back, amen, to telling people whether they want to hear it or don't hear it. God loves you, but he don't love sin. And while we're trying to preach it to somebody else, make sure, my God, make very sure uh, that you preach it to yourself, uh, that you be first partaker uh, of this word of God, uh, that you yourself uh, commission your own self uh, to be that disciple uh, that Jesus Christ is calling for uh, in these last days, uh, that you yourself don't be a castaway, uh, that you miss them yourself, uh, that you yourself uh, don't be double-minded, uh, wishy-washy, uh, unstable. Uh, a double tongue, talking one thing one way and doing something another. You make sure yourself that you yourself line up with the word of God. He tells us today in his word, I want you to go and compel them. Yeah, tell the people. We're telling people everything, but Jesus is coming. Hell is real. We're afraid to let them know that hell is real. It's enlarging itself. We're afraid to let them know, amen, praise God, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We're speaking so much Excellency of speech, uh, of hype, inspirational messages, uh, and what God's going to do, uh, and what you should have, uh, and where you should be. You can't have nothing, uh, and you can't be nothing, and can't get nowhere uh, if you don't have the Lord. Without God, nothing is possible. 
With him, all things are possible. We haven't expected in, in him. He is our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our Father. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is coming back. And he's coming for you and I. And don't you want to be ready when he comes? It's important. It's very important that you take this word on tonight. Every listening ear. Amen. And remember what we are called to do. We're called to go and make disciples, not just be a disciple. We're to make disciples of all nations. We're to let them know that Jesus is the way. He's the only way. He's the only way. He's the only way. We have to live by his commandments and his statutes, and not just on Sunday, not just on Saturday, not just on Wednesday or Friday or Tuesday, whichever your Bible study, whichever your service, but we're to do this continually and we're to grow in him. If you still stuck on your first experience with the Lord, you're missing it. You got to grow. You got to grow. Many are not growing and when they go through, they feel like, well, there's no sense in me serving God because I don't have what you have. I ain't no sense of me serving God because I've given all I have and I have nothing to give, but nothing has changed. That's the wrong teaching. It's not about how much you give. Glory be to God. It's about you. He wants you. He wants you. And he wants I. Many, many, many in the body of Christ, their goals have changed. They've been through things, and now they're looking for God to set them up. Oh, I done been through this, honey. I done done warfare. I done paid for what God is about to do. What cross did you die on? My God, when were you crucified? When were you beat all night long? When did you go through what Jesus Christ went through? We never would have made it. We couldn't do it. But that's what we look for. I'm waiting for God to bless me. I'm waiting for God to do this. Well, God is waiting on you to get right with him. He's waiting on you and I. We've got to understand that great commission is deeper than what we think as far as discipleship. It goes beyond that. We've got to get some solid teaching and some continual spiritual nurturing that produces growth and progress. When we won't have these baby Christians that's been walking with the Lord 50 and 40 years and they still whining and complaining because they don't have what somebody else has. We, we, we want people that have matured in the things of God that can rejoice with you when you get knowing that that's my sister, that's my brother. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. I don't have to be jealous because when he blesses you, he's going to bless me. He has no respect for persons. We need mature men and women in God uh, that has some solid teaching uh, that when it gets rough, my God, they'll stay in the race. They won't give up. They won't throw in the towel. Uh, they won't look down on somebody uh, that's down, but they'll pick them up. God help us. That's what he said for me to tell you all tonight. We got to be followers of Jesus Christ. And don't think being a follower is going to make everybody convert to Christianity. No, it's not. Because many are still going to reject him. But that's not your job. That's not your problem to be meditating on. You just obey and tell them what thus saith the Lord. That's what he said to tell the people that we've got to get back. Our spiritual energy and our efforts must not be focused merely on enlarging your congregation. Mm, my God, enlarging your followers. That's not where you ought to have your energy and focus on, but it ought to be a lifelong follower of Jesus Christ who avoids sin, who won't participate, who won't compromise, who won't sell out, 
God, who won't try to be a groupie with people uh, for your name to be listed on a website, uh, on a flyer, uh, on a board. Don't uh, It doesn't matter, praise the name of God, but you will be a follower of Christ and you will keep his commandments and his purposes with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. That's what he says for us today. And I tell him, thank you for his word. I tell God, thank you for who he is, because he is coming back. Whether you believe it or not, he's soon to come. Can you tell the time? Mm. My God, don't you want to be ready? Isn't there enough foolishness going on in the body of Christ? I'm not talking about the world. We already know what they do. We already know who they're serving. I'm talking about church folk, (laughs) folk that profess to love the Lord and profess to love one another. But do we really love one another? Help us tonight. Come on. We got to get this right. We got to get back. And we got to do it God's way. We cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ and don't take up our cross and follow him. We got to do it. We got to do it. And we cannot set our goals on based on the things of the world. If you don't get another house, you don't get another car. Another pair of shoes, another dress, another suit, another piece of jewelry. Are you not going to serve God? If don't nobody call your name, it's not written on the church bulletin. It's not put on the marquee as you go in. It's not on the flyer. Are you not going to serve God? Help us today. He wants us to do it his way. There's a cost to follow Jesus. Yes, he is a blessing God. Yes, he is. He's in the blessing, but he he specializes in it. But that is not why we're following him. That's not why, amen, we profess to be his. We're doing it. Look at what he did for us. It's for our own soul salvation. Count up the cost. Come on, if you're going to follow him, if you're going to proceed with the Great Commission, then let's just do it right, because we got to make some more disciples. We got children. You got nieces and nephews. You got cousins. You got neighbors. We got people that are dying right in front of our eyes, and we won't open up our mouth and tell them, Jesus saves us. We won't even ask, can I pray for you? Do you not know that there's power in prayer? We think if we give God 5, 10, 15 minutes, we did something. My God, can't you pray at least one hour? If we do come on the line, some is doing some of everything. Instead of focusing on what is needed, God wants us to get back. My time is up. And I tell God, thank you for his word. I pray today for everyone that heard this word. I don't want you to enjoy it. I want you to eat it and apply it. It's time out for saying, I enjoyed that word. And then you just go home. It's just like a dish. You go to Golden Corral or whatever your restaurant is. "Mm, I enjoyed that meal. Then you go home and you go to the bathroom and that's it and it's gone. And then you start over. Don't do that with God's word. Don't sit there and enjoy it. Eat it digest it and walk in it let it manifest in your life god i tell you thank you for your word on tonight i thank you for every listening ear in the name of jesus and father we will be commissioned to be the disciples that you're calling for in these last days there's much work to be done help us holy ghost in the name of jesus to come up higher in you lord help us to separate ourselves from the things of the world not to get caught up in what's going on but to get caught up in you god realizing uh, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith that you have not lost your power all power is in your hands our god help us in the name of jesus to mean what we say and say what we mean help us to not be so carnal minded my god uh, to die to the flesh and allow the holy spirit to have us way uh, in the name of jesus help the people of god uh, to stop gesturing joking all the time uh, and get 
serious, thy God. Get serious about the things of God because you are soon to come. And it is getting late and the sun is about to go down. Help us to realize in Jesus' name that we're in this world, but we're not of it. Help us, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Yes, we can enjoy what little life that is here, but don't get caught up in it. Help us to be mindful. Help us to be mindful as to who you are and just to who you called us to be. Bless this word in the name of Jesus Christ. And every listening here, and I tell you, thank you. I bless your holy name, for it is in Jesus' name that I pray and I tell God, thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Amen, amen. We thank God for the word tonight. We thank God for the message and the messenger. And I thank God for Apostle Dr. Miriam Hunt. I knew when I asked her to be the preacher tonight that it would be the unadulterated word. It wouldn't be, um, she wouldn't sugarcoat it. She wouldn't take down. She preaches holiness or hell. Amen. So I thank God for the word tonight. At this time, we're going to turn it back over to our brother, Pastor Nino Ackridge and the TMA Radio Show. God bless you. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. Amen. We thank all of you that tune in tonight for Third Sunday Hour Power with the Word. Join us next third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another message from God's Messenger. We thank the woman of God, Evangelist Linda Ellis, for all her support and all her work in the kingdom. Continue to listen to the broadcast and we'll be right back with more. So stay tuned. Amen. Thank you for calling me. Good night. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tonight, we just want to say again, thank you to our guest on tonight, Apostle Miriam Hunt, bringing a, a truth word tonight for all of us. Amen. And we bless the, the Lord for the message and the messenger. We're going to go with the weather forecast tonight, lower 40 degrees. Monday, partly cloudy, high of 62 with a low of 45. Tuesday, mostly sunny, high of 59 with a low of 30. Wednesday, sunny skies, high of 53 degrees with a low of 32. Thursday, high of 47 with a low of 24. Friday, high of 49 with a low of 39. Saturday, chance of showers, 60% chance, high of 58 with a low of 49 degrees. And then Sunday, uh, late evening showers, high of 61 with a low of 47. And that's your seven-day forecast. Amen. We know that uh, Thanksgiving is uh, around the corner. So we want you guys to be safe. We will not be broadcasting on Thursday evening. We will be traveling. So we pray uh, for God's uh, traveling mercy on us um, as we leave our family house. Amen. We're going to have Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, we always say dinner, but it's lunch. <laughs> so midday uh, brunch, I guess, if you want to say um, and then we'll be traveling. So again, we will not be broadcasting on on Thursday evening, but it might be a chance that we um, put something together uh, while we're out of town. So we're not 100 percent sure, but just stay tuned each and every week. Now, just to give you a breakdown for those that are new listening to this radio broadcast, we thank you in the name of Jesus for tuning in. Now, just to give you what we have going on throughout the week, uh, Sunday night we broadcast between the hours of 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. every Sunday. Then Monday night we broadcast between 7 
uh, 8 and 8 p.m. Tuesday, we have uh, the radio show, CWM Radio. The radio host is Apostle Michael Branch, and he broadcasts at 7 p.m. And on Wednesday night, we have Restoring Souls to Christ radio show. Uh, Pastor Brenda D. Wilson is the radio host. At 9 o'clock Wednesday, we have Men to Men Talk Back, the talk-up show with radio host Pastor Nino Acres, yours truly, and my co-host, Pastor Carl Young. Each and every Wednesday night at 9, we have different topics to we discuss, that we talk about, and we don't hold back 100% real talk on the Men to Men Talk Back to Talk show. And then Thursday, of course, you know, normally we broadcast between 8 and 9 p.m. So again, we thank each and every one of you uh, that continue to tune in and be a part of this radio broadcast. I pray the blessings of the Lord upon you and your families. And uh, we continue to love on one another, support one another. Amen. And do all you do to share. Share this broadcast that people may lo- li- listen in and tune in and be blessed by the word. Amen. So God bless each and every one of you. And we pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed week.
The one who never leaves the 